my name is Dr. Zinzi Gechel. I'm a general practitioner with Ponea Health. Uh, today, I'd want us to discuss about sexually transmitted diseases. So we, we have HIV, which is a viral uh, infection. So for HIV, uh, the presentation, uh, it won't present with genital symptoms. So the initial presentation will be having a fever, uh, general body weakness, and lymphadenopathy. So those will be the early symptoms that you'll be having. And once you see the doctor, they will do a few tests. Uh, there are so many HIV tests available. We can, you can also do an, a test at home. There are so many kits available that are affordable and uh, easily accessible. And uh, you, can, you will be started on uh, antiretroviral drugs. Uh, so uh, as we know, HIV has no cure, so it will stay uh, with you for life. But uh, it's good to ensure compliance to your medication uh, because this will enable you to avoid opportunistic infections. So tips on prevention of STDs. Uh, STDs can be prevented through abstinence, uh, the correct use of condoms, open communication with partner, or between partners such that one partner is able to tell the partner that they, they have an infection, and also, um, and also regular checkups, uh, that is regular screening. So the benefits of screening for STDs, uh, screening will enable you to avoid transmission to your partner. It will also, because some of these STDs also present asymptomatically, so you can, you will be able to catch it earlier on that you have this STD be, before the symptoms set in so that you can treat it at the early, early enough. Uh, because some of these STDs have long-term effects such as infertility. Uh, because uh, STD such as chlamydia is the number one cause of infertility. So you'll be able to catch it earlier on to avoid the long-term effects caused. So how often should screening for STDs be done? So you can have screening for your STDs uh, when you're having your annual medical checkup. And also you can have screening for STDs anytime you engage with a new partner. Uh, you can go together with your partner and get screened for STDs and so as to avoid transmission. So how soon can one engage in activities after clinical management of STDs? Uh, it's advisable that one completes their course of antibiotics and then they can engage in uh, sexual activities seven days after completion of the antibiotics and after resolution of the symptoms. Are STDs curable? So gonorrhea, syphilis, and uh, chlamydia, uh, you'll be given an, an uh, your doctor will give you an antibiotic regimen. This will get rid of the infection. But for herpes and HIV AIDS, unfortunately, there's no cure for that. So for herpes, you'll be put on uh, antiviral medication anytime you have an outbreak, and uh, this will help you decrease the, re uh, the chances of transmission to your partner, and also it will, pre pre it will also allow for the sores to heal. For HIV and AIDS, you'll be put on antiretroviral medication. For so what are the chances of STDs recurring? So STDs are likely to recur if one does not engage in safe sexual practices. So when one keeps on engaging in unsafe sexual practices, they are likely to have STIs every now and again. So uh, what is my definition of safe sex? Uh, so my definition of safe sex will be engaging in uh, safe sexual practices, such as use of uh, condoms, and also having open communication between partners so as to prevent unwanted pregnancies and transmission of sexually transmitted disease. Thank you for joining us for this discussion. You can book me through ponea.com. Uh, looking forward to, uh, for you to join us in our next discussions. Mm -hmm.